In this lesson, we're going to be looking at linear inequalities in two variables and systems of linear inequalities in two variables. And as soon as we start talking about inequalities, we're going to go back to what we talked about previously, that we want to try to approach inequalities in the same way for every type of problem. And the simple, remember, directions for this were pretend like it's an equation, plot those solutions, figure out what gets shaded. And that's not going to change. Now I have the full directions listed out here that we're going to solve as though it's an inequality. We're going to plot the solutions that we get. Critical values again are crossed off because we don't have them yet. I just don't, don't want to lie to you when I bring them up eventually later in the semester. But these types of problems also don't have critical values. Now again we're going to pay attention to whether the original allows equality or not. So do we have just less than or do we have just less than or, or do we have less than or equal to? So Previously, we did a closed circle or an open circle, where a closed circle meant that we're including this point. An open circle said, come really close to this point, but don't include it. Now, what we're going to be looking at is problems like at the top of the page here. x plus y is less than 3. If we pretend like this is an equation, x plus y equals 3, that's a line. So in this case, instead of a point being the border between stuff that works and stuff that doesn't work on the number line, we're actually talking about a line being the border between things that work and don't work on the two-dimensional plane. So that's what we're looking at in these types of problems, is we're going to be looking at a line that's separating half the plane from working versus half the plane from not working. So we've got to talk about this border point where previously our border points were either closed circles or open circles, now we're going to have a line that's a border point. So we have a border line. So when we had an or equal to when it came to dots, we did the same thing as though it was an equal to. We put an actual dot there. And when we didn't have or equal to, when we had less than or greater than, we did something different. And so we're going to do the same thing when it comes to lines. If we have an or equal to, if we're allowing equality, we're going to do the same thing as if it was equal. We're going to draw a line. We're going to do a solid line. Where things get different is if we don't allow equality. If we have just a less than or just a greater than, then instead of a solid line, we're going to do a dotted line. And that dotted line is the equivalent to an open circle. So that's the same kind of idea. Now once we have that borderline, step three is to say, which side gets shaded? Which side satisfies the inequality? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go with our simple method of testing a point. And here's the cool thing. If you have a line in your two-dimensional plane, that line breaks the plane up into two chunks. The stuff on one side, the stuff on the other side. So either one side is shaded or the other. So if we test one point and one point only, we know everything. Because if that point works, if it satisfies the inequality, we shade the side that has that point on it. If that side, if that point doesn't work, we shade the other side, because it must be the other side that works. So as we come across this reasoning, and we're going to see this through example, we're going to do a few examples of how this works. Now, as we do this, the only thing that we can't test then is we can't test any ordered pair that's actually on our line because that's not going to give us any information. We want to test a point that's on one side or the other. And that's how we're going to go about solving these problems. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. Our first example is to graph x plus y is less than 3. And our step one is to pretend like this is an equation. So we're going to pretend like this is x plus y equals 3. And if you want to graph that, you could use the intercepts method, but I think I would rather solve for y. This way we're in y equals mx plus b form. So this tells us that we have a y-intercept at 3. Our slope is negative 1, so we're going to go down 1, right 1, or else up 1, left 1. But we got to remember to look at the original inequality. Our original inequality did not allow equality, so that means we're going to do a dotted line. So as we go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, or up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, instead of connecting the dots, we're going to do a dotted line. 
Now in your homework system in my open math, you'll notice that there are two options as you're graphing these lines to either do a solid line or a dotted line. So make sure to choose the appropriate one as you're trying to graph these. So now we need to do step three. Step three, the simple version of step three is figure out what gets shaded. Now to figure out what gets shaded, the easiest way we're going to go about this is by testing a point on one side of that line or the other. Because right now what's going to happen is either all of this side gets shaded or all of this side gets shaded. We're not sure which way that is. So we're going to try to figure that out by testing a point. And now we can't test a point that's on the line itself, but let's pick one that's on one side or the other. I like the origin. The origin makes for a nice, easy ordered pair to test because we're plugging zero in for both the X and the Y. Now I would highly advise actually writing down what your test point is. In this way, if you make any errors or you want to check your work, you can always look back to say, what did I even do? So write it down of what you're actually doing. You're testing the ordered pair zero, zero. And we're going to test this back into the original inequality. So we're going to plug zero in for the X. We're going to plug zero in for the Y. And we get zero is less than three. Now also make sure to write down whether the statement is true or false. So zero is less than three is a true statement. So what this tells us by this being a true statement is that the ordered pair 0, 0 does satisfy the inequality. So this tells me that as far as my shading is concerned, the ordered pair 0, 0 should be shaded. So that means the side that includes 0, 0 is the side that I'm shading. And so this is my answer. My answer is the shading. It's really important to realize that, that the answer we're looking for is the shading, because what this answer tells us is this tells us that any ordered pair that's shaded will satisfy that inequality, and any ordered pair that's not shaded won't. And so it's not a bad idea for checking your work to do some testing and to say, let me go ahead and test another ordered pair. Let me test this ordered pair here that ordered pair should not work. Now notice that this step isn't necessary. We have our answer already. But I'm doing this just as a way of checking my answer. So I'm going to test 3, 1, and I'm hoping that it's not going to work. So if I plug 3 in for the x, and I plug 1 in for the y, and I'm plugging into the original problem, remember, the x plus y is less than 3. This gets me 4 is less than 3, which is indeed a false statement. And that's good because I didn't have that point shaded, meaning it shouldn't be part of my answer. Now, I purposely picked an ordered pair that was close to my line, and that was also on purpose. And the reason for that is, what if I accidentally graphed my line wrong? By picking a point close to the line, I'm going to be able to figure this out, because if I graph this wrong, like with the wrong slope, for instance, like say, for instance, this line was actually supposed to look like this then both that black point and the blue point would be on the same side of the line. And they'd give me the same answer, of either both being yes or both being no. And so by picking a point close to my line, I'm checking to make sure my shading's right, but I'm also checking to make sure that my line is actually graphed correctly. So I would definitely advise doing that. It's, like I said, it's not a necessary step, but finding ways to check your answers is always a good idea. None of us like getting a test back that's got red marks on it. We'd much rather find those errors on our own and never submit a wrong answer. It's kind of a good goal to have. We are starting example two, but I have example one up on the screen because I want to think about this for a second. I want to look at this example and say, is it true that that less than sign means to shade underneath the line. Could that make my life a lot easier if I just said, hey, less than means shade under the line. I can avoid doing all that testing over there. Well, let's look at example two. If that were true, then looking at this example as a greater than means I should probably shade above the line. Let's see if that's actually true to see if we can make that assumption or not. So let's take a look at this guy and go back to step one. Step one, remember, is pretend like this is an equation. 
because in doing so we're trying to find the line, we're trying to find the border between the points that work and the points that don't. So in order to solve this for y, we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Then we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1, so we'll have to distribute that across the right hand side. And we get y equals 2x minus 3. So that means that we have a y-intercept at negative 3. We've got a slope of 2, meaning we're going to go up 2 over 1. Our original inequality does have an or equal to, meaning we do the same thing as we would normally do with an equal to. We're going to graph a line, a solid line. So we're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And I like to go up 2 over 1 a bunch of times. I know within the homework system itself, you really only need two ordered pairs. But when we're doing it by hand, the more accuracy, the better. So now we're going to connect the dots, and especially because I don't have the straightest lines in the world. So it helps you to become get straighter lines if you, the more ordered pairs you have. So there's our border between the points that work and the points that don't. Now to figure out what gets shaded, we need to test a point, and again, we need to test a point that's on one side or the other. Whenever possible, test the ordered pair 0, 0. Now, again, I said whenever possible, I want to remind you, we can't test an ordered pair that's on the line itself, because that's not going to be helpful. Our goal here is to figure out which side gets shaded. So if the point is on the line itself, we won't know. But the origin is on one side or the other, so we're going to test that ordered pair. And so we're going to plug 0 in for x, we're going to plug 0 in for y, and again we're doing this into the original inequality. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, and so this inequality is stating 0 is greater than 3, or equal to. It's not. So we're going to jot down that this is a false statement. This being false tells me that the ordered pair 0, 0 should not be shaded. This should not be part of my answer because this doesn't make the inequality true. So the side that does get shaded is the other side. So we're going to shade the entire other side of the plane. And everything shaded, every ordered pair that's shaded, is a solution to that inequality. So going back to the original question that I wanted to ask, does this greater than sign mean let's shade above the line? No. So we can't make that assumption. Now you may have heard something about this before if you've actually taken some algebra courses that cover this. And the problem with that being, in order to make any assumption like that, we need to solve for y keeping the inequality sign there, meaning if we divide by a negative at any point, we got to change the inequality sign and do all that. Well, that's a lot to remember and a lot of places to make errors, and that's the beauty of the way that we're solving this. By using a test point to figure out which side gets shaded, we can avoid any messiness, and that messiness is where errors happen. And so that's why we want to approach in this way is because we want to avoid errors. What's better than not making errors, avoiding the possibility of them in the first place. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that's what we're trying to do by using a test point to figure out what gets shaded. And then we'll be sure that we're doing this the right way too, because we can keep on testing points and seeing what works. The next thing I want to start talking about is going to be horizontal and vertical lines. So that's going to come up a lot throughout this lesson is we're going to be having inequalities that are going to result in a horizontal or vertical line. And we touched on this a little bit previously when talking about uh, graphing straight lines and during our review from your previous math course. But I just want to give you a refresher and how to kind of convince yourself of which is which. Because I think most of us know that when we just see x equals a number or y equals a number, we know that's going to result in a horizontal or a vertical line. But a lot of us get confused on which one's which. And so I want to talk about a couple different ways that you can kind of remember which way is which. The first of which is to think about a function. So remember that a function is anything that can be written in the form y equals, because function notation, remember, is f of x equals, it means the same thing as y equals. So a function can be solved to be y equals, but we also have this definition of a function being that it passes the vertical line test. And by passing the vertical line test, we mean any vertical line you draw only crosses your line 
once, if at all. So a horizontal line passes the vertical line test, because any vertical line you draw on a horizontal line only crosses it once. So a horizontal line is a function. A vertical line is not a function, because the vertical line that goes on top of it crosses it an infinite number of times. So that tells us that equations of the form y equals are horizontal. x equals is not a function because it can't be solved for y equals. So x equals is going to be a vertical line. Now you can also think about this in terms of slope. So slope is our steepness of our line. But we also see the word slope coming up when you're talking about like downhill skiing. So we can try to think about it the same way. So we can talk about this in terms of slope to say a slope of zero is something that we can ski. It's not very exciting. Zero is a very small number. That would be cross-country skiing. A slope of zero is a horizontal line. Now an undefined slope is something we can't ski. That would be a vertical line. That's called base jumping. You can't ski down a vertical line. And so an undefined slope is a vertical line. A slope of zero is horizontal. Now this can also make sense in terms of rise over run because if you have a horizontal line your rise is nothing but your run is anything you want. So zero divided by anything is zero. Whereas with a vertical line your rise is anything you want but your run, your side to side, is nothing. So your slope is trying to divide by zero which is undefined. So again with a vertical line you don't have a slope. It's undefined. And going back to identifying these as equations, in terms of y equals mx plus b, if your m is 0, you have y equals 0 plus b or y equals b. So y equals b has a slope of 0, meaning it's horizontal. x equals has an undefined slope because it's not in y equals mx plus b form. So it's vertical. So the equation of a horizontal line is always of the form y equals a number. And a vertical line is always of the form x equals a number. So let's go ahead and do example three. So if we pretend like this is an equation, then we're trying to graph x equals three. Now x equals 3, since it's x equals, it's not a function, meaning it is a vertical line. So we're going to graph a vertical line at x equals 3. Now keep in mind that our original inequality did not allow equality. Therefore, we're going to do a dotted line at x equals 3. So we've got a vertical line here at x equals 3. And this is our threshold between the half that works and the half that doesn't work. To figure out which side gets shaded, we can use a test point. Now this one is probably obvious enough that you probably can jump right to the answer. But we can use our good old favorite test point of the origin. The origin is over here. And we can go back to the original and replace the x in the problem with the 0. And there is no y in the problem. So there is no y to replace with 0, but that's okay. 0 is greater than 3 is a false statement, meaning we do not want to shade the origin. We want to shade the other side. So that means we're shading to the right, which hopefully made sense. If you were going to say, hey, I want to graph all the ordered pairs whose x values are bigger than 3, it's going to be off to the right of that line. And that's what this inequality is saying, is I want all the x values, I want all the ordered pairs whose x values are bigger than 3. And so that's this example. So we know that in order to graph a linear equation, again, linear means line, the bare minimum to graph a linear equation is two ordered pairs. That's what we're looking for two ordered pairs. The way that we like to do that is with the y equals mx plus b form, or the slope intercept form. And the reason we like that is because getting two ordered pairs and really getting more than that is really easy. We can read off the y intercept really easily, plot it, and then from there move by the slope. We can go up and over, and then we can from that point go up and over, and then up and over again. And then we can always go back to the y intercept and go up and over or down and over the other way. And so we can get a whole lot of ordered pairs using that. 
all we need is two. Now, what I want to point out is we only do that because it's easy. If that's not easy, don't do it. So what we're going to look at is in our next example, our y-intercept's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a fraction. It's going to be something that in our homework system, it's not easy to click on. So we're going to say, well, let's not do it then. Let's not start there. Let's find another ordered pair. Let's use something else to find another ordered pair. Now the cool thing is, with y equals mx plus b form, your slope works no matter what ordered pair you start from, whether it's the y-intercept or not. So if we use another method to find our first ordered pair, we can always still go back to the slope and say, now that I know the slope, I can still move from this ordered pair and find my second and third and fourth ordered pair. And that's going to be kind of our approach, is that we're going to try to say, let me use a different method to find an ordered pair to start at, and then use the slope to find a whole bunch more ordered pairs still. Let's take a look at this example. Going back to step one, step one, pretend like this is an equation. So x plus 2y equals 3. We then want to graph this, so we want to try to solve for y to get this into y equals mx plus b form. So we're going to subtract the x to the other side. We're going to divide by 2, giving us negative 1 half x plus 3 halves. All right, so we've got this y-intercept that we don't like. We don't want to start at this y-intercept. Now, we do have some good information here. Our slope is negative 1 half. But we don't want to come over to 3 halves and start there because that's in between. And we don't like to do that. We like to start at nice, happy, integer ordered pairs. So again, remember, we don't have to start at the y-intercept. That's just a convenient point to start at. So instead, let's find a different one. And my suggestion to you is, if the y-intercept doesn't work out real nicely, find the x-intercept instead. So our equation was x plus 2y equals 3. The x-intercept, or where you cross through the x-axis at, is when you let y equal 0. If we let y equal 0, then our equation becomes x plus 2 times 0 equals 3, or x plus 0 equals 3, or x equals 3. If x equals 3, and we already said that y is 0, that's the ordered pair 3, 0. This gives us an ordered pair to start at. This is a nice happy ordered pair. We can come over here to 3, 0 and say there's an ordered pair that I know is on my line. Now I need at least another ordered pair. That's where our slope comes in. Our slope is negative 1 half. That was good information when we solved for y equals mx plus b. We just didn't care for the b. Even though it is the ordered pair, it, our b is 3 halves, our y-intercept is 3 halves, our slope is negative 1 half, and we can still use that. From our ordered pair we like, we can go up 1, left 2. We can go up 1, left 2 again, up 1, left 2 again, a bunch of times. Or we can go down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, a bunch of times. Now going back to this problem, we did not allow equality. So this means we want to do a dotted line to connect our dots. And then we need to worry about the shading. Now you'll notice that you do cross through your y-axis at 3 halves, at 1.5. But again, we wanted to find a whole number so we could get a nice, accurate graph. So, let's go ahead and do our test point to figure out which side gets shaded. Everybody's favorite test point is the origin, and once again, the origin is not on this line, so that's an okay test point. In testing the origin, I'm going to get 0 is less than 3, which is a true statement. So that true statement tells me, let's shade the side that has that ordered pair on it. So I'm shading this side that has the ordered pair on it, and that's my solution to x plus 2y is less than 3.
So let's start talking about systems of linear inequalities in two variables. Now when it comes to a system of linear inequalities in two variables, what it looks like is what I have on the screen. I want to start here before we get to the kind of the notes portion of this, just so you can see what we're talking about. We're talking about one inequality and another together at the same time. So a system of linear inequalities is a lot like the compound inequalities that we did previously. It's kind of like the and. We want the first inequality and the second inequality to be true at the same time. And if you remember what the and compound inequalities were, it meant we were looking for their overlap. We were looking for where do they intersect at? Where are they both shaded at? And so that's what we want to do when it comes to the systems of linear inequalities in two variables. Now, the big thing that we're going to look at, though, is how we're going to organize that. And the reason this becomes so important is because our organization with the compound inequalities worked really well because it was a one-dimensional problem, but we used the second dimension to help us picture it. So we are graphing above the number line. By graphing above the number line, we are using the second dimension. We are using height to help us see what was going on. But realistically, it was a one-dimensional problem. We were trying to solve for an x value that worked. In these problems, we're trying to solve a two-dimensional problem. So we're looking for ordered pairs that work. In order to visualize this in the same way, we would need to use the third dimension, which unfortunately we can't do. I can't draw above my paper. <laughs> it doesn't work. So we got to come up with a different organizational scheme that kind of accomplishes the same goal. So I'm going to go ahead and show one way the process that I would suggest doing if I were you. But if you come up with a different way to organize your work, that's okay. But I'll kind of explain why I like to do this the way that I do. So the basic process I'm going to go through is I'm going to graph each line the way that I would normally do it. And in doing so, what we're basically going to have is an X on our paper. It might be a little bit skewed in one way or another. It might look more like a cross than an X. But basically, you have two different lines that intersect somewhere. Now, in doing so, you basically have four chunks. You have the chunk at the top of your X, to the right of the X, at the bottom of the X, and the left of the X. Each of those kind of look like triangles. One of those triangular -y areas is going to be your final answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out which of those are shaded by the first inequality, and we're going to put a little x into each of those triangle areas that are shaded by the first inequality. Then we're going to put a little x in the second, uh, what, what satisfies the second inequality, and there's going to be two of them for that. So once we, cro we put x's in two of them for the first inequality and x's in the two of them for the second inequality, whichever of those quadrants, whichever of those chunks has two x's in it, that's what works. That's the overlap. That's where they're both shaded at. So those X's are showing where we would shade each of the individual inequalities. And so whichever one is shaded by both of the individual inequalities, that's our final answer. Let's look at example five. This is an example of a system of linear inequalities in two variables. And so we're going to start off by just graphing each of these lines. But if we graph just the lines, we need some way to differentiate which one's which. So personally, I like to use colors. I'm going to use blue for my first one and red for my second. Now, if you don't have color pencils to work with or you don't have a pencil and a pen or something like that, then maybe you could label them as one and two and then make sure to label your lines appropriately as well once you graph them. You want some way to be able to look back and say which one was which. So I'm going back to my blue line. If I graph this as a line, ignoring the fact that it says less than, then I have a y-intercept of two and a slope of 3. That slope of 3 says to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, or to go down 3 left 1, down 3 left 1, oops, 1, 2, 3, there we go, and down 3 left 1 again, and maybe one more time. Now this one had just less than not or equal to, so this one better be a dotted line. So I'm going to use a dotted line to connect my dots. And I'm not going to worry about the shading yet. We'll get to the shading in a minute. Let's go ahead and graph our red line. That one had a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 2, meaning I go up 2, left 1, up 2, left 1, 
or I can do, go down to right one, down to right one. Now this one does have an or equal to in it, so we're going to do a solid line for this one. So I'm going to do my best job of doing a solid line that's pretty straight, I hope. It's got a little wiggle to it. That's okay. So now we're going to talk about shading. So now that I have these two lines, I basically have an X on my paper. And yeah, it's a little bit skewed, but that's okay. Basically, one of these quadrants is going to be our final answer. So maybe my final answer is going to be this top one here. Maybe my final answer is going to be off to the right over here. Maybe the final answer is going to be in the bottom. Maybe it's off to the left. So that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out is which of those is the final answer. So what we're going to do to figure that out is we're going to go to my blue line. And I'm going to look back at the original inequality. And I'm going to test the origin. And I'm going to figure out whether the origin should be shaded or not. I get 0 is less than 2, which is true. Now, don't follow along with my shading here. I just want to help you understand what's going on. What this tells us is that the origin should be shaded. So if the blue line were my only problem, again, don't shade here, this is what's going on. This is what would be shaded as far as the blue is concerned. Now, the reason I don't want to do this is I don't want to have a whole bunch of shading all over my paper and then try to say, oh, the part of the overlap is this part over here that I have to shade even darker. So instead of shading all of this in, what I want to do is I want to say this chunk and this chunk are shaded by the blue. And I'm not actually going to shade that. Is I'm just going to say those two chunks are what's shaded by the blue. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the red. I'm going to come back to my original red inequality, and I'm going to test the origin on it. And I'm going to get that 0 is greater than or equal to 1, which is a false statement, meaning on the red one, I do not want to shade the origin. So that means on the red, and again, do not actually shade right here. This is just for your visual during this lecture. The red one is shading everything that does not have the origin on this side. So if we look back to what we'd kind of call the original X, the original cross of my red and my blue line, what's shaded here are those two chunks. So this kind of shows us where the red would be shaded and where the blue would be shaded. My final answer to this problem is where both are shaded at. So if we look at where we have a blue mark and a red mark, it's off to the right over here. So this is the actual answer to the problem, is the stuff that's off to the right. And that's our final shading for our final answer of where we have both blue and red. Now one thing I didn't address here um, I'd sort of touched on it throughout the lecture, but I just want to take a minute to talk about it, is what if we have a line that crosses through the origin? So the boundary line actually crosses through the origin. Well, we can't use the origin as our test point. Just use a different point. Pick 3, 0, or 2, 0, or 5, 7. Pick some other order pair as your test point, and then just determine, is that shaded or is it not? Based on that, which side should be shaded? So that's all that's going on here. We used the origin as our test point because it wasn't on any of our lines. But if you happen to have a line where the origin is on the line, just use a different test point. That's all.